All right, guys, so I'm back here with the Civic. Right now, I'm currently waiting on some gaskets to fix some of the leaks that it still currently has. So today, I'm gonna to be doing something that we could basically do for free. Let me go ahead and pop the hood and we'll get right at it. So the part that I'm gonna be working on today is getting rid of this EVAP system. You see there's a big charcoal canister back there. Basically what the EVAP system does, all the pressure and all the vapors that build up into the gas tank gets routed over here, goes into the charcoal canister to get purified or whatever you wanna call it. Then after that, it gets back into the intake. If we follow this hose, it goes back into the intake for those vapors to get burnt up into the engine just making it a cleaner car and not putting those vapors out into the atmosphere but over here in Texas we do not care about our environment so we're going to be taking that on out so first thing I'm going to do is move this intake system so we'll have some room to look over here and take some of the parts out I got the intake tubing out of the way but I did also take out the battery and took out the battery tray just so I could fully get down here there's just three 12 mil bolts that hold on the battery tray and then of course we could clean up in here as well but the main thing we need to do is remove this box remove the uh, tubing that you can see run through the intake and so that tubing follow it goes right here to a purge valve which we're going to leave that valve on there and then take off that little tubing right there Here we have this hose that was connecting into that purge valve into the black canister. There's just one 10 mil bolt holding that in. Take that on out. We got the hose off from the intake. We got that uh, little valve or whatever it was on the back of the intake, got that off. Got the vent hose off. Took out the canister. Took out the bracket that holds in the canister here. And then there's another little canister that was right next to it, but everything on this back side is out. Now the Civic is a 2000 in 96 they started using OBD2 and OBD2 if you unplug the EVAP it definitely will give you a check engine light. So that's the reason why I didn't take out this valve here. It's still connected so the computer will still see it but there's like another valve of some sort purge valve or something that's on that canister. Here's the charcoal canister and everything that I had taken out here. Here's that valve that was on that intake. And then here's that uh, purge valve that I was talking about that has a sensor on there. I did take the screws off already. They were a little bit hard, so you might have a little bit of issue with that, but take this off and you got the valve with that sensor. So like I was saying, the piece on top of those injectors there on the fuel rail has to still be in there plugged in, and this is still gonna have to be plugged in. So. I'm going to plug it on up here and you can easily just kind of tuck that out the way. Boom. So that is plugged on in. For now I'm just going to let it hang on the, uh, on the fuel hose right there. I need to clean all of this up. Before I clean up I'm just going to place a vacuum cap on the intake manifold there so we don't have a vacuum leak. Boom, so everything is clean back here. 
Got rid of a couple of wasp houses and a lot of dirt from inside of that corner. So it's a lot better up in here. And then I do have the vacuum cap where that vent hose was going into on the intake manifold. I did already clean up the battery tray, and the little plastic piece that it has as well. And so gonna be sticking the tray and battery back on it. So as far as for this vent hose that is in the back, we need to go ahead and cover it because now the fumes from the gas tank would just be coming underneath the hood and we want to go ahead and reroute that. So I did buy some hose from O'Reilly's here. The size is 5 8 I got two feet. And then I just reused one of the uh, one of the clamps there. So I'm just gonna put this on to that vent hose and route it downwards towards the behind the steering rack there. So I wasn't able to use the hose clamp just but I have it on there. It's tightly secured for the most part unless you try to pull it. And then the hose going down right there. I did cut a little bit off that hose just so it wouldn't be too long, just a tiny bit, about two inches there. But we are all finished up for that evap delete. Cool, so everything is put together. Intake is all on there. We got the cap, the vacuum cap on the intake, the breather hose going down away from the engine. Of course, got rid of that charcoal canister with its little hoses, what have you. Again, I didn't unplug the sensor here. That's on top of the fuel rail. That is still on there. And the purge valve is actually down here. You can see the brown little plug right there. And it's not going to move anywhere. So, I shouldn't have any check engine lights. And we are all good to go on this. So, let me give it a nice startup. So there you have it guys, OBD2 EVAP Delete. Hopefully you guys like this video. Comment down below if you have any questions. Now, just to let you know, some people say there are some cons on deleting your EVAP. Uh, first thing is gonna be decreased gas mileage. And honestly, that might be a little true because I do notice maybe it gets empty a little quicker. Um, but I mean, I'm not really tripping if it's like a mile, two miles per, uh, out of the gallon that I'm missing, you know what I'm saying? For just deleting the EVAP. Although it does make sense because now all those vapors are just going out through the vent tube and not getting burnt back up to its you know maximum use of the fuel for me personally i just want to clean up the engine bay and then you know of course by deleting that vacuum that additional vacuum it's less unnecessary vacuum that it has to pull and it's going to be more vacuum that it can pull for the direct air intake from the uh, actual intake system and then the other con that people will say is you're going to get a check engine light which I showed you exactly how to not get a check engine light and just by keeping those sensors that are plugged in for the EVAP system. But now of course if you guys are on Honda or another ECU management system you can go ahead and go into the settings and get rid of those EVAP sensors to fully get rid of the whole EVAP system. So some of you may be wondering on how the car performs since deleting the EVAP system. Um, from driving the car, I probably drove it now a good thousand miles or so since deleting it. There's probably a, a little bit better throttle response for sure. Uh, like I said, maybe a slight decrease in mileage, but it's not anything to really worry about. But other than that, that's really going to be it. That's going to be it for this video, guys. I thank you for viewing to the very end. Hopefully you like the video and are subscribed to the channel because I'm going to catch you on the next one.